Unreal plugins are great. That's why I've collected a list of them in this video. And I promise you that at the end of watching this video, you're definitely going to have some of them installed in your engine and you will be working a lot faster than you were before. Every plugin that I will be showing you today is completely free and can be downloaded right now for the newest engine version on the Fab Marketplace. They're all linked for you in the video's description, so please check them out and let's just get started with the first plugin that I have to show you. When working in Unreal, there's a high chance you're switching between levels a lot. And finding the level in your content browser each and every time can be incredibly time consuming and tedious. Now this is where the free plugin level bookmarks comes in. Let's install it, enable it in the engine and restart the editor. If you look at the top left of your editor, you will find a new toolbar icon and that icon is the level bookmarks icon. Now, here are a few very useful features, such as adding the level to the game default maps, so the editor's startup map or the editor map that will be opened when the game is built. Pretty useful, every time I create a new project, I can set it up like that. But also, this allows you to add the current level that you're in to that bookmark list. So if you're in your testing level, you can go to the top and click the add to level bookmark button. And now if you're in any other level and go back to this icon, you can find it in the list and quickly come back to your level. Now I'm telling you this is just super handy and it will speed up your workflow by like a lot. Jumping over to Blueprints, there are two plugins I would like to show you. The first one is a visual node upgrade plugin called Crystal Nodes. Now you can see it here already a bit, but it will change the style of your node. Now this is very much personal preference if you like it, but I kept it in the video because maybe you like it and it's free. All right, to get to our next plugin, two things I wanted to show you. When researching for this video, I was actually looking for a plugin which would allow you to for each loop through a dictionary. I have a dictionary here, items, and it has different entries of cheese, cake, table, and different integers kind of acting as the amount of each item. Now, I actually found out that Unreal Engine has added this behavior by default. So just this is not a plugin, but maybe a tip for you guys. You can now actually for each loop through items, which is incredibly handy. Anyway, what you can't loop over by default are data tables. If we have a data table and we would want to loop over all the elements in that data table, this is how it would look like, right? We get all the row names. We loop over the net row names, get the row, and then break the items. This is super annoying. And that is where the free plugin data table function library comes in. What this allows you to do is you can just, instead of doing all this crap, drag out and just for each data table row, and you can just get the row out here, break that, and I have all my elements from my data table, just way easier and just a lot better in my opinion. This plugin also allows you to get the data table size, which isn't a thing there by default. By default, you'd have to do something like this, getting all the data table row names and then the length of that, which is also kind of messy. Coming on to the next plugin in the list, what a lot of you guys are probably doing all the time, you are debugging. You're trying things out by printing them with the print string node and checking if something's firing, what is firing, whatever. There is a plugin which can make that so, so much easier. It is the plugin called Better Debug. Now, this allows you to be a lot more effective with debugging. So let's test this out. Every time I jump, I will just print a string using the normal Unreal Engine behavior. And I'll call it jump. Now, if I jump, it's being printed. The first problem here is that when you are just doing this for jumping, it's fine. But when you have a lot of complex logic in your game, which most of us do, you probably have a lot of these debug messages on your screen. So this is where this plugin comes in. Better Debug offers you to categorize your prints. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to go to our content browser and scroll all the way down till we find a folder called Better Debug Content. In here, you have a widget, which you can right click and run the editor utility widget. This will give you the settings for the Better Debug plugin. 
you can just drag it up here and here we have print categories so if i go back to my character and i swap this print string to the better print string so here we can do a few things we can give it a debug info i'm just going to write player and then the debug message itself which is just going to be jump and an index. I'm going to put the index to 1. Now if I go back to the game and I jump, there is our debug message just as expected. This by itself isn't anything special. So I'm just going to print another variable in the event tick so that we have a few more messages to work with. Again, we're using the print string here and I'm printing an arbitrary health variable. And I'm going to right click the settings here to split that. And then I have a display time. A little hack, this works by default as well. If you put the log time here to zero, then if you print it every frame, it won't clutter your screen and it will just stay at top, but it will still update. So if I play now, we have the number at the top here. And if I jump, I also get the jump message. But if we go back here to the category, we can see that this is debug index zero, just as our player. If we put this to one, compile again, go back and disable the category one and play again, you will see that our constantly printing message isn't there anymore right now this isn't a big difference but say we weren't just doing this for one variable let's say we had a few maybe even more now it's already getting harder to to see the message we're actually looking for in all this mess now if you are actually organizing your categories here you could then just disable the category one say you only use the category one for your player stuff you could disable that launch again and then it's just clean and you can see what you're working on. I personally use this when I'm working on a new project. I'm going to put all the stuff I'm actively working on, so the important debug messages for me when I'm trying something. I'll put that to the fourth category so that I can disable all the other stuff and I can only see the stuff that's really relevant to me. The second part of this plugin is that you can print a lot more than just strings. There is a lot this plugin can print. Of course, there is the normal stuff that you would expect from Unreal as well, but it can actually print vectors, it can print transforms, it can print arrays, it can print rotators, integers. Now, in Unreal, you can print integers, but it's just going to be a bit more messy by using the normal print string node and then just taking your float or integer, putting it here, and it's going to be converted to a string. Pretty annoying in my opinion, but with this plugin, you can just print the integer just like that and it's going to be a lot less messy because there is no conversion stuff. Use the print transform node from the better debug plugin. That gets a lot easier. So let's go into the settings here and just again put the display time to zero so that it doesn't clutter my screen because we're tr printing this every frame. And now if we play, you can see at the top left, there is the transform being printed at all time. And that's a lot easier than doing it manually. Of course, you could do it the Unreal way and just plug in the transform into a normal print string node and it will look something like this. But I think this is a lot less understandable than what we have here with this clean and just way, way better formatted. If I have this names array, which just has two entries and I wanna see what's inside here and, and I wanna use the normal thing in Unreal here, I can't really plug this in here, so I, what I would have to do is I would have to make a for each loop and then just print it for everyone. Again, super annoying, super clanky. What you can do instead, just print string array with this plugin and just plug that back in and that's going to print the entire array. So sometimes in a game, you will have to create icons for whatever you're doing. Maybe it's cards, weapons, items, whatever. And creating these icons can be super annoying. There is actually a free plugin which does this for you. If you install the free plugin Icon Creator, you can actually generate these icons from your static meshes directly in the engine. So to locate the plugin, go to the little search icon here and make sure you have under the settings show plugin content, of course, enabled. And in this search box, we're just gonna search for Icon Creator. And select the first one here we have the demo stuff and there's this editor utility widget once again and you can right click this run it and you will get the icon creator i'm just gonna pin this here and move it right over here so that we have it in full screen now we can select three types of things here we can select the static mesh an actor or a skeletal mesh 
And one more thing we need to do in order to get this to work is we'll need to take this little blueprint here and move it into the scene just like that. I think that's so that the plugin functions and works properly. You could create a new level for that if you wanted to try it out in a new level. Now I'm, I'm going to select an asset here. I could use a cube or maybe a pistol that we get here with this preset. Now here we can adjust the camera, which I'm going to do. The distance, we're just going to zoom it in right so that it's about here. So we're just going to change the FOV. And then here, what we can do is we can actually rotate the gun to kind of find a nice view angle and we can we can find like a nice angle i like it that way actually i'm just gonna zoom out a bit and then once you're happy with the look of your item once you're happy with that just gonna drag it out here you can go here to the right where you have a lot of settings it's already set up in a way that should work for most games which i love it's so so good you have the icon name, it has the correct prefix. So I could just put gun icon in here. You can select, well, a safe path. Just gonna leave that at default, but you would put a better one. Resolution of 512 is perfectly fine. And then I can just create it. And now if we go into our content over here, there is a new folder called icon creator. Let's go in here. We have the gun icon and it's even transparent already for us. This brings us actually right into the next plugin that I want to show you. It completely surprised me when I first saw this. This plugin is called Odyssey, also free, and it's basically Photoshop in Unreal Engine. I don't know why this exists or how they pulled it off, but it does, and it's pretty damn impressive. So as you can see, this basically replaces the normal image view that you'd have in Unreal. And I can just edit things right here in this window. So if I go on the left here to the primitive drawing tool and select rectangle i can just drag and there we go we now have a rectangle and it's just filled out i can now enhance my icon if i want to right in the engine without even going to photoshop so for some quick edits this is super useful but it's also not that of a simple tool so you would actually have to kind of understand photoshop or gimp already in order to use this because it's not that basic this has a lot of cool features and i'm going to show you some of them now of course you can undo and redo here at the top pretty self-explanatory and then at the right bottom you have layers layers are really cool and they even have blending modes. we can add a layer and it has different types of layers so we could add a folder layer a raster image layer or or a vector image layer so the difference between them folder groups things raster image layer it's basically an image with pixels and a vector image layer you could say it's an image made out of mathematical shapes so you could zoom in zoom out and definitely it's made out of paths for now i'll just add a raster image layer here and if i now add my shape to this layer i can actually pick a color here at the top and add the shape again i have a red shape i can select the opacity for that layer here i can lock the layer with the little lock i can hide and show it and i even have different blending modes so i could do a multiply a lighten a darken so i could drastically modify the look of my little gun right here if i wanted to and i could even kind of save this as a preset and reuse this kind of layer kind of the edits i'm doing for all my other icons so that they all have like a unique style this is so powerful and probably too much for this one video so I'm not going to go into it, but I'm going to make a new video just about this free plugin. So stay tuned for that. And we're just going to move on to the next plugin. If you have some notes here and you're commenting and a lot of the times the comments, they don't fit what you're working on anymore. So in here I have the event tick comment, right? And now because I've been working here, it's just no longer fitting the entire thing. So what I can recommend you to get is the free plugin called auto size comments. And this will actually size this little comment here just by clicking a small button. So we have kind of made these other edits and we now want these two nodes to be included as well. We can just select them and we can click the little plus icon here, add selected nodes, boom, and our comment is now sized properly for all these nodes. Yeah, super useful tool if you're just commenting stuff a lot and you don't want to use the little annoying thing on the corner to adjust the comment. It's annoying real fast. 
and it's nice that this is there. The next plugin I would like to show you is called Actor Locker. In Actor Locker, it really does what you expect. You can select any actor that you don't want to be selecting all the time or that's just annoying you and you can click the little lock icon and now I can no longer select the actor. Super useful. I use this all the time. Select your skybox locket because most of the times you're selecting that accidentally. Select stuff that's annoying you. Maybe in your scene you're just trying to select this one thing and the other thing is getting in the way all the time. Select it. Just click the lock icon. Alternatively right click the asset and just click lock selection here. Yeah, super useful plugin. Recommend you to get it. Oh, there's a bonus plugin I forgot to mention. Global events plugin. In Unreal, a lot of the times you are creating events using event dispatchers. So I can create an event here, something like on health change, and then I can call that event and somewhere else in my code, I can bind to on global event and just do something here. But this only works if you have a reference to the blueprints. We would have to get a reference first if you wanted to bind to this health changed event from somewhere else. This can get pretty tedious if you have events that pretty much everything needs to know. Say you have something like on death, on player death. If it's a single player game, then that's a pretty universal thing. Global events plugin does what you would expect. It allows you to create global events. To use the global events, it requires a bit more setup, but it's actually really worth it. I'm just gonna do my example on a event which triggers when the game ends. What you can do is you can right click, you can go to miscellaneous and in here data asset and just search for global event identifier. You'll get this asset created and we'll call this on game ended. If you open it up, there's nothing there. You don't have to do anything with it. Now to call the event, you just call the global event and in the event identifier, you can just select the on game ended. Now event dispatches in Unreal, they also have inputs they they can have different variables that you can just pass through them here just two booleans and you can do that here too actually so you can actually pass a data object here as well now in order to do that we need to create one more asset go back create a new blueprint class and here we'll just create an object we'll say it's our let's say game ended data just open that up you could say this is an empty data file essentially we can write here, we can add a variable and we can call this, let's say player died as a bull. I don't know. You could say score in here and just go back into the test blueprint here as data object data. But now we can't actually select it in here. We have to first construct object from class. And as a class, we'll just choose the game ended data. And one thing you can also do, go into the game and data will actually just expose both these var variables here at spawn and check the little eye icon so that when we construct the object in our blueprint where we're trying to call the data here, we can now pass these variables in here. Player died and we can just give a score of something like, like this. And then we can call the global event here as an if I again, we're selecting our on game ended, which we created and just drag and drop the data into the data object. Now, if we go into our player and say we want to destroy the player when the game ends here, what we could do is we could go into the event again play. We could do by global event here and again, select our on game ended here. Add as a callback, we're gonna say on game end. And if you would want to access your parameters that you passed in here, you can actually get the data object and cast that to our game ended data. And now you could just do get score here and then just access all that. So that's the global events plugin. Super useful. Honestly, not sure why this isn't in here by default. And for things like this, for like things that are happening globally, I then move this stuff into the game instance, not the game instance. I move this stuff then into the game modes. This works as well, but then you have to get the game mode, cast your game mode, a lot of messy stuff. This is so much cleaner and really works really well. If you actually want to learn a bit more about Unreal, I have a video about just some tips on working faster, which is on the screen right there. You can check it out. You can leave a like, subscribe to the channel if you want to see more. I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.